Hey, how's it going guys? It's Chocolate Chocobo, and I am back, and I have a Black Ops 3 PC review um, for the beta, of course, the PC beta review, and I am hoping to see you guys on here. I know a lot of people have been interested in it and looking forward to this game right now. I think it's an open beta, so you can just hop on for the duration of it at this point. Just go download it on Steam. Should be a great time. Definitely recommend you check it out if you are interested into that kind of thing. If you're on console, take this whole review with a grain of salt. There's going to be some differences, a um, couple of different things here and there that will be different because I am on PC, you guys, of course, on console or on console. So there's that. Uh, the way we're going to be doing this review is I'm actually doing this like in terms of a live commentary review style thing is I can't, I don't have a custom match, so I can't just like sit down and show you the playground and environments and just kind of go through everything. So instead what we're going to do is we have to actually find a match while we're doing the review. So forgive me for the insanity if it's not very clear. Um, that's just the way it goes. And let's go to the format. So I'm going to first give you my overall impression. After I do that, I'm going to break it down to five different subcategories of what I think makes Call of Duty Call of Duty and how they do in those regards. I'm not going to be really doing the aesthetics of the game because that doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. Like it's a it's a good looking game though. So there you go, my visual. Um, but those five categories will be gun balance first, then map balance, lethal, tactical, and score streaks. And I'm, the reason I'm going to be doing that is because I don't want to you know, be in matchmaking for all eternity. Four is going to be specialist, and then five is going to be the miscellaneous stuff in case I miss anything or I have to readdress something that I didn't get to um, that I felt like I needed to. So let's go right into the overall impression. Do I think Black Ops 3 is a good game? Yes. What would I give it out of a 10? I want to say I'm going to give it a pretty solid 9. And the reason why I give it a 9 um, and to kind of put this in perspective is it is a game that I think has a good replay value and has a lot of kind of fun interesting moments that makes it go that makes it as fun as if not better than Black Ops 2 definitely better than what I think is apparent for Ghosts and Advanced Warfare at least on PC I know some people like it on console but wasn't my cup of tea um, but I have really high expectations for this game in beta it's polished it feels good and I feel like this was a really positive step because they got to address a couple different things for PC, which I think is going to make launch really smooth. So let's go into why I think it belongs in this wonderful category with starting off with gun balance. So gun balance, um, we're going to also tie in progression into this. So progression, and this is actually sort of a con as well as a pro, every single thing of progression feels really meaningful. Um, whenever you unlock perks, especially, you're going to notice that it's going to change the way the game is played a lot for you. Now, the reason why I say it's kind of a con is that if you don't have access to certain things, for example, flak jacket as of right now, lethals hit really, really hard. If you go anywhere near a grenade and you're not on the right footing for it, you will probably die. There's going to be a lot of moments where you can't really avoid it. Um, the advantage of tactical mask concussions are really really strong so you are going to reel from each throw and then it's going to put you at a major disadvantage having the different attachments um, the different kinds of weapons definitely is a big deal in this game you can see kind of how many different things there are and it takes a while to get all the way up to and yes that is rapid fire and assault rifle i've not gotten the chance to try it out yet but i have heard wild things about these things so pretty cool stuff um very impactful so the positive side of this is that whenever you are actually playing, you have more of a reason to be excited for the next level and, and then until you go into prestige, then at that point you're just bragging. But at, whenever you're leveling up, it's definitely a lot of fun to go see, hey, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and try to get that rapid fire on my favorite assault rifle. Pretty cool. But in terms of the actual gun balancing, I have to say they did a great job of giving each gun an identity. I think it's really well done. It's, of course, a little bit odd because I don't have every all access to everything, so I can't give you a completely fair and unbiased review of it. But from what I have seen and what everyone else has kind of you know confirmed with me, the guns all feel very different. They've definitely brought recoil back into the mix in terms of making that a balancing component, which I think is a very smart move. Um, they're, the guns here, like for the assault rifles, right? This one's a semi-auto. Semi-autos are always going to be a little bit different. Um, really strong, apparently, though. But, you know, burst semi-autos that kind of fall into their own category. But of the three full auto assaults, these guns all have really, really odd quirks. So the HVK, kind of like your standard assault rifle, it's actually quite accurate, but it's sort of lacking in terms of the damage department, right? You can see the different bars there. It's not really the strongest thing, but it's still a pretty solid performer in all regards. You have then the ARC, which 
is a stronger gun, a little bit slower, but also has this really nasty kick involved. Man of War being the, this shoots slower, but man, does it hit hard. Because of these different like balancing points, I think it's actually a really well put together game. It's a very well put together uh, game from the gun balance point anyways. And all of them have a very unique identity. I think that's a great thing. If completely caters to if you have a playstyle, there is a gun for you. Then you can fine tune it with your attachments, which I think is nice. All the attachments so far seem to have done something or another. It doesn't really make that much of a difference to me ultimately. But for these, they are, there are certain things that make a huge difference, like high caliber, for example. Um, high caliber being the thing that gives you a higher headshot damage. Things like that, kind of cool. But uh, definitely, each unlock is very important. So gun balance, though, overall is pretty good. The shotgun, a little bit concerned. There's, I think it's the KRM that sort of feels like a Remington. Not really a big fan of that. Submachine guns, I think they're weaker compared to assault rifles at this point. This may change as people get more time in the game and we get more unlocks, but... As of right now, it definitely feels like an assault rifle heavy game. LMGs actually surprisingly feel pretty good to me. I was actually kind of shocked about that. The sniper rifles, there is quick scoping question mark in this game, but as far as I know, it's not really as viable as before. It feels sluggish to explain it the way I see it. But um, so that's gun balance. Good identities, pretty meaningful progression, and a lot to look forward to. The guns themselves are all performers. There's not like horrific balance. You're not going you know, into a match going, oh, I have to select my one true bay of a gun and then that's it, you're doomed forever. No, all the gun balance seems pretty good. Even the sidearms uh, seem pretty good. I'm not gonna say anything about a combat knife because it's a combat knife. Um, launchers, I'm gonna actually put that with lethals, tacticals, and score streaks. So let's go into finding a match and while we are doing that, we're gonna talk about map balance. Now, I can't talk about map balance without talking about mobility. Mobility was, at least for me, a huge factor in Advanced Warfare that made the game painful. Um, and it was just obnoxious to play through Advanced Warfare's mobility. Because everyone was popping around too fast, right? Whenever you spawned, you weren't really sure, was this a safe spawn? Am I about to get jumped from behind? And it was a little bit too hectic, and it caused, gun, it, it caused less... Um, focus be put on gunplay and more about just kind of doing whatever you want to do which for some people float to their boat for me it seemed kind of disappointing because I was sitting there going man would I have loved to have more gunplay involved there uh, <laughs> that said map balance though does feel pretty darn good I was actually pretty surprised by the way they did this and in conjunction with mobility is actually really really nice so, hold on one second, let me shoot this UAV down. Here we are. This is actually a pretty decent map to represent this. So, we have three lanes set up back again. This is actually a lane because you can wall run on there. There's one sort of through the middle and then one through this side as well, right? It's kind of convoluted because the buildings are all obstructing it. But we're back to the three lane system, which is a really good way to focus on gunplay, right? Because you always know generally what direction the action is heading towards. You may not know completely, but you have a pretty solid idea of, you know, okay, guess what? There is going to be people, if you're especially if you're playing objective gameplay, oh, there's going to definitely be um, people heading over towards the middle of the map or to the sides of the map. That's definitely a high traffic area. And that makes it a lot more predictable in a good way, right? You don't wanna be like hunting down action, but you also don't want it to be super crazy. It gives you opportunities to outplay your opponents. Hey, you know what? I think I can drop you before you can drop me. I think my reflexes are better. I think my positioning is better. It definitely brings a lot of that back. So I am, I personally think that is a great boon. Um, also, in terms of verticality, some people may have some issues with the old vertical. Oh, God. Verticality, which is... Which is definitely something I think is fair as a concern. Verticality is not a big deal here. Full jump packing or whatever you want to call it is just like that. It's not that much vertical added. It's it's a fair bit, but not something that is going to break the game. Also, they have out like outlawed a lot of movement outside the map. So a lot of random boundaries, but they're usually pretty intuitive. You're very seldom going to go, you know what, I think I should be able to get on top of there. It's almost never going to happen. Um... But also, as you can see from before, wall running, it's pretty intuitive. It doesn't usually make that much of a difference. It's more of just opening up a different angle um, at the same height, usually, 
that you would find someone normally, and it just gives you a different way to do it. It makes them commit to moving in a direction. That's all it does. It doesn't really do anything besides that, which I think is good. Uh, so overall, map balance, map design, I think it's a great job. I think that this is about where you'd want it to be for a Call of Duty, and it is definitely a step in the correct direction as opposed to a step in the wrong direction, as I felt Advanced Warfare kind of was. I'm getting absolutely stomped. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I was kind of hoping I would do well, but unfortunately, you can't always get what you want, right? So, yeah, overall, very, very good map balance. Mobility is well balanced as well, and I think that is all great. Now, to go on to kind of the next concern, or the next thing that is on the docket, lethals, tacticals, and score streaks. Now, let me see if I am lucky enough to find the perfect example here. Never mind, game's over, so I guess we're just going to talk about it abstractly. Lethals and tacticals, as is in the beta, are stupidly strong. And the reason why I call them stupidly strong is because if you do not have the respective perk for lethals, that's going to be flak jacket. For tacticals, that's going to be tack mask. If you don't have those perks, expect them to do a lot of annoying things to you. Lethals will kill you from a fair distance away. Tacticals will stun or whatever you from a fair distance away. It's actually kind of scary. The score streaks are very impactful. They all feel fine and dandy. They can kind of be destroyed a little bit easier than I would expect, and that's coming from me, a support player, so it's a little bit concerning. It's not really all that bad for higher streaks because they still have like the basic equivalent of flares, which is nice. That's what you want, but... It definitely is a little bit concerning. Like UAVs, they go down like candy. It's actually redonkulous. Engineer now shows them, and it's just, it's very easy to hunt down low streaks at this point. Um, but high streaks definitely have that little quirk to them. Black hats do have the ability to hack your score streaks. I don't know if they're going to keep that. I'm imagining they might change it because it's a little. It's kind of annoying to think that, hey, you work towards this huge streak and then someone takes over it and they just, you're screwed. <laughs> like your score streaks can turn against you. It's not like you can't replenish them from death, which makes it doubly awkward. Um, so score streaks are all fine and dandy. Lethals and tacticals, you know, besides them being a little bit strong right now, they're the same lethals and tacticals we're all pretty much used to at this point. You got your frag, you got your, this is basically a bouncing betty that can put on the walls and stuff. Uh, this is kind of like Napalm, I guess. It's a really strong version of Napalm. And C4 is... I think it actually has to, like, uh, charge? Not charge, that's not the right word. It has to actually set. Maybe that's what I'm looking for as a word. So it's kind of neato Kinito in that way. I think that's actually a really good design for it. Tacticals, you know. I don't actually remember if there is... You know what? I'm going to actually quit this game. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to quit this game so I can show you guys what I am talking about here. And also, I don't really remember the tacticals. But, um, yeah, trophy system, smoke screen, shock charge. You will notice there's no tack insert. I don't know if that's going to be added, but EMP, concussion, flashbangs. The standard, you know, the regular suspects are here. The usual suspects are all lined up in the tactical bar. Um, but definitely, we're missing a couple of them that are, you know, have been around previously. But nothing that really seems shocking to me, besides the shock charge, because, you know, lol. Uh, that all said, lethals, tackles, and scores for side, you know, that feels fine, actually, besides being a little bit strong. I think if they just tweak the value down a little bit more for radius, maybe, it would be all right. But overall, it's not too bad. Specialists. Now, this is the major difference between the different, uh, this Call of Duty and any other Call of Duty. Not the wall running, not the random change back to the three lane system it's this this is the weirdest addition and change and i actually think it's a good change i think they're a little bit strong right now i'm sure if you ask kenny he'll have a lot to say about it but um definitely an interesting addition to the game basically you can choose like your hero or your avatar or whatever you want it to be and then they come with either a passive ability that you can activate so you know for ruin he runs faster um for outrider it's actually not passive i guess but it's like a ability as opposed to a weapon their ability is to kind of make a threat grenade go off on them so you can see through walls they light up in your mini map all that stuff um, you have Glitch, which sends you back in time, and then so on and so forth. You have a bunch of different ones. They're actually pretty cool. The weapons are, are pretty strong, I'm not going to lie. Weapons are almost all one-shot killers in the right scenario. Some of them are straight up, like, Annihilator. Literally will one-shot kill you. There's nothing you can really do about it. So, kind of cool, kind of neat. Really like 
um, the idea I think that they could do with some nerfing. Maybe the rates can be nerfed a bit, or maybe that their actual practicality is a little bit nerfed. Uh, but they're definitely very, very strong, very impactful. But I'd rather have them than not have them. And that's what I'm going to say about that is they are, I think, nice additions because they make the game have more replay value. And it also kind of makes it interesting because it's another way for you not to go into your pick 10, right? But it's a way for you to kind of cater towards your play style. So for me, especially as a support player, Seraph is really appealing because I can get combat focus where suddenly I shoot down a UAV, I get extra points. I'm able to call in my own UAV, support my team. Whenever I'm taking out, whenever we're going on the objective, or if I'm, you know, diffusing kind of random equipment scattered throughout the ground, it's a definitely a cool addition there for you guys who are a little more aggressive. Profits glitch is pretty nice. If you want to play the objective like a freaking boss and you just want to get everyone off point, ruins gravity spikes come in pretty handy. So overall specialist, pretty cool. I like them. Obviously, I haven't tried them all, but from what I've seen, they've all been pretty neat. They've all been very different. And I think it's a lot of fun. Also, for some reason, every single specialist that I like to play is a girl. Don't know why. Just so far, I like Outrider and I like Seraph. They're both girls. But um, there is that. Now, let's go into the miscellaneous stuff and wrap up the review because I've been going on forever. And you guys are probably like, Choco, please stop. You've been going on forever. We're hearing random sounds. We're losing our minds. Well, don't you worry. Store is a little bit concerning. It's kind of whatever, though. You can type in-game for PC. That's actually kind of a... Or not, yeah, you can type it not in-game, I should say, but in lobby. So I can actually just be like, hello, world. And if I had a party here or whatever, they can see it. Pretty cool. Um, I actually kind of like that. The social tab, I don't like the fact that you can join off of recent players. It's always been a pest and an annoyance in the like past in terms of random people will keep joining you, especially if they want to just bother you kind of obnoxious kind of wish they didn't have it um but it is what it is friends list is all good it's really cool it'll make fun of you whenever you don't have any friends it'll be like there are no friends but um pretty intuitive you can join them partying system was a little bit glitchy it seems like they kind of resolved it so i'm not too worried about that but uh the party system is working it's actually really cool because you can rejoin your party and then it kind of automatically remembers oh yeah you were part of this party and then it'll try to pull you into it as it can um, and the party system, obviously, we just talked about. The uh, menu, obviously, we don't have access to any of this stuff. I can't talk about it. The options here, pretty nice. Even for being the, you know, quote unquote limited options, they're actually quite extensive. I was really surprised by it. Um, overall, pretty neato, canito stuff. There is, I don't know what the heck's going on with barracks, though, because, you know, barracks is barracks. I don't know where it is or what I need to do in order to get to it. And let's see. Oh, the servers. So I know a lot of people had concerns about the servers. I felt very little to no like really odd lag moments. The game is actually pretty fluid. Uh, registration kind of gets wonky sometimes, but in terms of what I've seen, it's been more of a consistent player than not. So I'm I'm saying like this is pretty darn close to one of the better performing Call of Duties in terms of registration. I I'm not sure if I can definitively say off the top of my head it's better than Ghosts. Or advanced warfare for sure but it feels better it feels a little bit more responsive it feels a little bit more intuitive so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the review i hope it was something useful if you liked it be sure to hit the like button down below let me know in the comment section what you think also let me know if you want me to do another review in this style or if you want a different style let me know that too but if you want a review for the campaign and or multiplayer whenever it goes into full release and subscribe to the channel, of course, if you are new. And let me know if you want more Black Ops 3 content, because I have no idea if you guys even, you know, really like watching Black Ops 3 content anymore, unless it's with the boys, which I would completely understand. So let me know that feedback. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, and ciao for now.